The Brennan Center for Justice is headquartered in New York, and we are an organization, a nonprofit organization, that focuses on issues of justice and democracy, and we like to think of ourselves as a part think tank, part law firm. Uh, we litigate on these issues as well as handle advocacy and research on these host of issues in the areas of democracy and justice. Uh, today, we've asked you to come here today for a conversation and for lunch to talk about a very important and what we think is an urgent topic and a report that we've released uh, entitled Executive Privilege, a Legislative Remedy. Today, we have with us uh, my colleague, Frederick A.O. Schwartz, Jr., whom we lovingly call Fritz, uh, who will lead our discussion uh, today. Uh, Mr. Schwartz has a distinguished and long legal career uh, where he formerly served as a partner and litigator at a major firm in New York City before joining the Brennan Center for Justice. Mr. Schwartz, in his service as chief counsel, Mr. Schwartz briefly uh, took uh, a, a, a break from litigating to serve as chief counsel to the Senate Select Committee to, stover, to study governmental operations with respect to intelligence activity, commonly known as the Church Committee. And most recently, Mr. Schwartz has further distinguished himself by authoring a book entitled Unchecked and Unbalanced, Presidential Power in a Time of Terror. So without further ado, I will turn this over to Mr. Schwartz, who will introduce the rest of our distinguished guests. Again, thank you for being with us. Enjoy your lunch and enjoy the conversation. Well, Nicole, thank you for the remarks, which probably are going to take longer than what I say. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we, I hope we, we're going to go, I'm going to make a few opening comments, then we're going to go to my left with Ted Sorensen, Mickey Edwards, and Congressman Miller. And then the author of this report that's coming out today, Executive Privilege uh, Legislative Remedy, which is written by Emily Berman at the Brennan Center. Um, the, the, just to set the context briefly, clearly in, the la in recent years, and not just the last eight years, but in recent years, presidential power has steadily grown. Um, as executive power has grown, uh, Congress, Congress's ability to get information about the use of that power is both more important and has become more difficult. Secrecy and the culture of secrecy has been a huge contributor to it becoming more difficult for Congress to play its role under the, our Constitution as a check and as part of our checks and balances. More executive power, more secrecy have caused great problems in this country. The doctrine of executive privilege, which sort of got its, its start with the Supreme Court's decision in U.S. against Nixon, that the result of which was that President Nixon had to turn over his, his tapes. But the Supreme Court, in the course of reaching that decision, unnecessarily reached out to create a presumptive privilege for presidents based on the theory that unless their conversations are kept secret, presidential advisors won't do their job properly. And Ted may have something to say uh, on that subject. Um, but the, the executive privilege has become a tool in the hands of presidents that has been used to for information getting to the Congress, not just used by um, flatly saying no, but by forcing Congress to settle for too little or to give up. And we think in this report that there is a problem and there is a solution. So that's just sort of setting the scene. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Ted Sorensen.